Elijah was becoming exasperated with the disobedience of the Jews and their constant wandering away from God. The nation that God had reserved for himself by covenant kept prostituting itself with the evil Babylonian system, and so he challenged the priests of Baal to go to Mount Carmel for a contest in front of all Israel. Notice again how he chooses a mountain for this confrontation. They are competing to find out who is the commander of the high places and the real Most High God. The confrontation is designed to show God's people once and for all that they should turn their back on Baal, who is Satan, and commit themselves to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish, and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting fire to it. I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set fire to it. Then call in the name of your God, and I will call in the name of the Lord. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agreed. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, You go first, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it and call in the name of your God, but do not set fire to the wood. So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called in the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, O Baal, answer us! But there was no reply of any kind. Then they danced, hobbling around the altar they had made. About noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder, he scoffed, for surely he is a god. Perhaps he is daydreaming or is relieving himself, or maybe he is away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be wakened. So they shouted louder, and following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, no response. Then Elijah called to the people, Come over here. They all crowded around him as he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took twelve stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel, and he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord. Then he dug a trench around the altar large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces, and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, Fill four large jars with water, and pour the water over the offering and the wood. After they had done this, he said, Do the same thing again. And when they were finished, he said, Now do it a third time. So they did as he said, and the water ran around the altar and even filled the trench. At the usual time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so that these people will know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to yourself. Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell down on the ground and cried out, The Lord, he is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Then Elijah commanded, Seize all the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one escape. So the people seized them all, and Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley and killed them there. Notice that self-mutilation was a part of the normal custom for Baal worship, and remember that Satan loves to humiliate and mutilate man because he is made in God's image. One of the evidences of the increasing influence on paganism on society today as we hurtle towards the New World Order, the Antichrist, and the End Times is the rise in self-harm, tattooing, and unusual piercings. Particularly tattoos have become socially acceptable, and Christians have fallen prey to this pollution. Here are some quotations from various experts regarding the practice. 